Okay, the first step to getting this thing going is to go ahead and navigate to the bin folder from the Mio SDK. Grab the Mio64 DLL from the bin folder and put that into your project deploy debug folder. Pop up a uh, command prompt and navigate to your project debug folder and execute the mkexp command by entering mio64.a and mio64.dll. This will go ahead and create the .a files. You can see it was just created here. And we're going to go ahead and add that to our project. So go back to your project and right click and add. Navigate to your 64 debug folder. Now we don't see it here because currently we're looking at all CPP files, so we change that to all files. Select the .a file and hit open. We've now included it into our project so that we can link against it. Go ahead and copy in the SDK source code. I've navigated back here to my uh, Mio SDK download directory and I'm going to go ahead and go into the include and I'm just going to go into Mio and I want all these, I want all these files here. So I'm just going to grab the Mio folder copy, go back to my project, and I'm just going to paste it in here. And um, then I'm going to come back here and similarly to the .a file, I'm going to go ahead and right click on our project and go to add, open up the file and just copy everything in here. And you'll see here that we've got the two files that we really need, the .hpp and the libmio.h. Let's add some components. First of all, add a memo. This will be used to trace out the gesture control data that gets received by the Mio. Next, add a rectangle. This rectangle will be used to visualize uh, the input that gets received by the Mio. And lastly, add a timer. This timer will be used to pull the Mio device at regular intervals we're going to go ahead and change this down from one second to 10 milliseconds. So now that the components have been added, let's go ahead and examine the code under the hood. I've already incorporated the demo sample code from uh, the SDK. And starting from the includes, uh, we just have some standard includes here. And here we are actually including the Mio SDK itself. There is a data collector class that basically serves as the interface between the connected app and the Mio device itself. There are some uh, properties here that are tracking its positional data, the role, pitch, and yaw, as well as its current pose. And the on arm is referring to whether or not the device is actually being worn. The on unpair. Uh, function gets called when the meal gets disconnected or unpaired by the user. Um, on orientation update will get triggered when the device is orientated. And this gives the original positional data for the Mio uh, as a point of reference. On pose automatically gets called when the when the Mio detects that your fist is making one of five recognizable gestures. Um, those gestures are a clenched fist, a spread finger fist, a fist where your hand is pr projected to the left, and another where your hand is projected to the, to the right. Um, and it can also detect the thumb being pressed against the pinky. And lastly, it recognizes when your hand is doing none of those poses and is considered at rest. Um, on arm recognized is fired when the Mio armband is detected as being worn on the arm um, and on arm lost as the name indicates um, tr uh, triggers when somebody takes the meal off of their arm okay uh, lastly we have this print statement here now I've changed the print statement from its original purpose to interact with that rectangle that we added to the stage so the first thing that happens is we go ahead and clear the existing memo line and then we check if the Mio is on the arm. And if it is, we want to let the program know whether it's on the left or the right arm. So it just gets spit out to the memo. Uh, after that, we're going to go ahead and capture the pose, if there is any. 
by uh, simply assigning a string here and then tracing that out as well to the memo line. And then we're going to analyze what pose. For the purposes of this demo, I'm just looking at whether there's a fist or not. If there is a fist, then we take the scale of the rectangle and double it on the x and y. Otherwise, we just return it uh, to normal. Lastly, we can just print out uh, some more uh, positional data, the raw pitch and yule, and apply that positional data to the rectangle. These numbers are just kind of magic numbers that I played around with that worked well with the orientation. And you may want to change these values around for your own purposes. Lastly, we have some uh, some variables within the class that uh, track whether the arm is on, or rather if the meal is on your arm, which arm it's on, you know, the positional data, and the current pose. Um, moving on from the class, we have the in the global data collector class and the hub. Um, the Mio hub is basically the sort of command center that the Mio armband connects to. The uh, Mio hub is part of the SDK, and um, when we begin the application at our point of entry under the T form here, we actually initialize the hub by adding the collector to the add list uh, by passing the collector in rather to the add listener uh, method here and uh, then after that's added we just simply begin the timer and this timer will get run at whatever interval we set and when um, that interval fires it pulls the device by telling the hub to run and collecting its data and so putting this all together uh, we actually are able to see the Mio in action so let's go ahead and see what that looks like. So here you can see the rectangle translating as I move my arm to the left and to the right, and up and down. And here we see the fist doubling the scale, and also the rotational value is being interpreted.